Okay, we know everybody has access. We know there are barriers. Start with top three barriers and how we tackle them. Well, the big challenge in this area is the 15% of Americans who are not using the Internet. And we actually know who they are uh, based on government data as well as uh, public opinion surveys. They're senior citizens, high school dropouts, poor people, people who live in rural areas, and the disabled. And when you think about how we can start to overcome the digital divide in each of those categories, with senior citizens, it's really the relevance question. Like, older people haven't grown up with all this technology. They see stories about privacy in, in invasions, uh, identity theft. They're afraid of the internet. And so with them, the key is really teaching them how the internet is relevant. It's a good way to keep up with the grandchildren uh, and uh, gain access to information. With poor people, it's basically the pricing issue, so uh, making sure that uh, they have access to uh, uh, affordable uh, internet. And then with people who are disabled, there's amazing technology out there, for example, with the visually impaired, that can allow them to, uh, uh, it basically converts the text uh, on uh, web pages to an audio signal, and so essentially it reads the pages to them. So with those individuals, it's a matter of just kind of getting that software out to them and getting them to actually use it. So again, tackling this 15%, is there a fundamental understanding or misunderstanding about how much of the economy is now digital. I mean, that to apply for jobs, to, to keep up with your health care, those kinds of issues. Are they aware of it, or they just don't think it applies to them? A lot of people don't see the relevance, even though if you actually look at it objectively, it's quite relevant. Because as you point out, uh, the economy now is a digital economy. Like many companies, I know Brookings is in this category, we've moved to online applications. And so, you know, if you want to apply for a job at a lot of places, you need internet access. Uh, and so it's kind of, and, and then when you think about kind of the new innovations that are taking place uh, in healthcare, in education, in uh, online communications, it's like, you know, much of the world now is taking place online, and so we have to make sure that all those people have access to the benefits of technology. Well, you mentioned education. I mean, that's all tied into the digital economy. So if someone is working three jobs, you know, having this kind of access could be incredibly valuable to get an advanced degree. Abs Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and certainly education is an area where the benefits are quite uh, clear. Uh, you know, people need to upgrade their skills. Our economy is in transition. We're having to retrain uh, people. And so, you know, if you're having, if you already have a job, uh, then uh, there are tremendous online resources. Uh, there are MOOCs. There are online degree uh, programs. If you're taking courses, just access to electronic materials. It's much more convenient. And anybody who uh, has taken advantage of those skills immediately sees the advantages over the uh, brick and mortar world that we grew up with. Okay, so, so what is the next wave of solutions? I mean, you, you have done books on this. You have a very good view of all the programs that are out there. Tell us what you see you know, we should be doing, what the media should be doing, what corporate America should be doing, what the government should be doing, the next wave of tackling this issue. The two big trends that we're paying attention to is the world is moving from text to video and the technology is going mobile. Uh, and so basically video streaming is the thing that everybody wants, uh, especially millennials. They love to watch something as opposed to reading something. And so putting information in a form that's accessible to them, uh, videos, uh, films, uh, documentaries, other uh, things like that. And then the mobile revolution is actually taking place at a much more rapid rate than I think anybody would have expected even uh, five years ago. A couple years ago, I went to uh, Barcelona for the World Mobile uh, Congress, and basically they were saying by 2016, just uh, next year, 80% of the broadband subscriptions around the world are going to be through mobile devices. So increasingly, we're having to configure uh, the digital economy, online entertainment, the world of education, the world of healthcare for mobile devices because that's how people are accessing the information. All right, so you mentioned video. Um, now, I feel like I'm a semi-sophisticated user um, I have a good computer, but I call up video and it just needs a lot of broadband. So if we're transitioning to video, how are we going to take care of, I mean, arguably in a lot of rural areas, they don't have the speed in the broadband. So how do we get that first? 
This is certainly a challenge, and uh, private companies are investing to provide faster uh, networks, and it's a national uh, priority. But uh, we're also seeing uh, improvements in the sense that uh, there's a big push to move towards Wi-Fi access. It's a more affordable option, and you can uh, get uh, faster speeds over local areas. Uh, so it's a way to get access to video uh, online streaming at a, uh, a fairly inexpensive price. Um, I just want to remind you all, if you have questions, you have cards at your table, and somebody will come around and grab them from you. Um, so schools, um, how are schools doing? How are universities doing? Um, and lower schools um, in poor areas, how are they doing in, in, in keeping up with computer literacy? We've invested a lot of resources in wiring the so-called anchor institutions in every uh, community, which are basically schools, hospitals, and libraries. So even if someone does not have personal access at their home, we want to make sure that there's a community resource on which people can draw. So schools are certainly a part of that. Uh, we know that the skills that are going to be required in the 21st century economy are going to be online and digital in uh, their uh, nature, and so we have to make sure it's absolutely vital that young people have access to electronic uh, resources. Uh, the digital world is a way to overcome the rural-urban divide that we still see in every society around the world. I mean, I grew up in a rural Ohio uh, community, didn't have a lot of uh, access to uh, the latest uh, things, but today, because of the online world, even if you live in a remote area, you can draw on the expertise, the resources, and the talent of people uh, living in bigger areas. So it's a great way to kind of thinking about ways to bridge that digital divide. Now, you've also written a lot about um, global digital divide, and we are a global economy now. And so how important it is to, to the U.S. that we bring up uh, the digital divide in underdeveloped countries? It's obviously important in the United States, but it's absolutely crucial in every economy around the world. I mean, I've, I was in uh, India in uh, July, and there the new prime minister has made a big push on the mobile economy. Like, he wants to bring India up to speed through mobile devices. Uh, what we're seeing in a lot of developing nations is they have uh, basically skipped the landline revolution and the desktop revolution that we went through. They've gone uh, straight to mobile. So, you know, you walk around downtown uh, New Delhi, it's like everybody has cell phones. Increasingly, people have smartphones. Uh, tablets are becoming uh, ubiquitous. Uh, I was in Indonesia in the spring, and it's basically the same thing. So you can go even to remote African villages that do not have electricity. People have phones, and they recharge them through a uh, solar panel uh, in the middle of their uh, community. Now, isn't, isn't part of that, um, and I know particularly in Africa, have to do with banking? that they wanted people to have a way to bank because there were no buildings and to be able to, to talk a little bit about that, that they, they gave them access for that. Yes, in Africa, geography is a big challenge just because you have big uh, geographic areas. Uh, you don't have banking uh, services in large parts of uh, the country. And so, uh, you know, in many of these places, it's like, Poor people and, uh, uh, and other people just simply don't have access to the basic financial services that we expect in terms of uh, credit, uh, insurance, and so on. So basically, they're still living in a cash economy. So places like Kenya have been tremendous innovators in terms of mobile money, like being able to use cell phones to basically transfer uh, uh, money uh, from either a consumer to a business, from a family member to another family member. And so this has been a tremendous advance in terms of bringing financial services to remote areas. And how do we, the, how does the U.S. stack up against developed countries overseas, the EU and major China in terms of the digital divide? Uh, the United States does very well in terms of access and adoption. Some of our speeds trail other places. Uh, South Korea is the world leader in this area, although South Korea also had an easier time than we did wiring their country because uh, almost all uh, Koreans live in one of seven cities. And so the population density was very high, and so being able to uh, wire uh, that country was easier uh, than uh, what we see in the United States or in other countries. So as we get more and more access and more and more speed, do we need to be working at the same time on cybersecurity? 
Absolutely. When you look at public opinion surveys about that last 15 percent that are the non-users or other people who are underutilizing uh, technology, they may have access to it, but they're not really frequent uh, users, their concerns are uh, privacy, security, and identity theft. Just because, you know, every day we see stories in the paper about something uh, being hacked, a, a business, a government agency, or whatever, and so there are people out there that are not taking advantage of the benefits of uh, digital technology and the digital economy just because they're fearful about uh, bad things uh, happening online. Uh, and, of course, we all do have to be uh, observant in terms of how we uh, practice uh, good uh, uh, digital hygiene. Uh, one of the funniest things is, you know, Americans are just terrible on passwords. There have been uh, studies of this, and like the most common passwords dogs, are <laughs> password, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, your, uh, your college, your high school, uh, the name of your uh, pet, you know, basically all the information that we voluntarily put online through Facebook and other social media, that forms the basis for most of our passwords. So we all need to do a better job on that. I use my kids' names. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I have to change them all now. Um, any, just, we're running out of time here. Any, any cities that you think are doing a knockout job on, on, uh, on all these issues? Actually, there are lots of cities uh, that have put a uh, big uh, premium on uh, uh, moving ahead in uh, this area, uh, including there are some city governments, like in uh, New York, uh, they have uh, tried to take advantage of online resources to promote uh, better responsiveness, uh, provide more government accountability. So uh, there's lots of tremendous uh, innovation taking uh, place throughout urban America. All right, do we have any questions? Um, I don't know if anybody wrote any cards. Or we could take one question from the audience very quickly if anybody has a. Which means it has to be a really good question. It has to be but a good question. But don't no, let that no intimidate speechifying. You, so. Okay. All right. Well, with that, then I think well, if there's nobody has any questions, we will we'll, we'll uh, oh wait we have a question we have a question okay. State of the art. What about the urban poor and bringing them up to state of the uh, state of the art? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, when you look at the statistics, uh, people earning less than 30,000, their internet usage rates are about 20 percentage points uh, lower than uh, the rest of America. So that certainly is a big challenge. With that group, pricing is the big issue. Uh, and so uh, we encourage companies to do what Comcast is doing, uh, which is developing very affordable packages. There are nonprofit groups out there who can train people on how to use uh, the technology. Uh, we need to make sure that every community's schools, hospitals, and libraries have computers there that people in the community can uh, go and use free of charge. There are a lot of communities that are developing kiosks uh, where uh, if you don't happen to have uh, internet access at home, uh, you can still go and uh, apply for jobs and kind of take advantage of uh, the digital economy. 